Vision Sunday, are you ready? Vision Sunday is all about what you see. Today I want to talk about something that I see and something I believe that God sees for us, not just Restoration Church, but honestly for his capital C church, for the big church all across the world. I believe God's calling us to something. And so today, the vision that I get to share is one that's been in my heart forever now. It's been a few months and I have, I've just, we've been wanting to share it. We've been wanting to talk about it and we, we've just been holding on to it until God told us it's time to release it. And so the vision starts like this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. I remember the day I went bald. <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember the day I went bald. I went to go visit my brother at his barber shop. And now, you may, may or may not know this, depending on how many people I've been in my life for how long, but I used to have these ringlet curly curls. I, I had a man bun at one point. I had these curls, and I, I felt good about myself. Until I look back now and I see some of those pictures and I go, what did Lauren let me do? I blame it on Lauren. And I remember <laughs> having these curls, but because I couldn't see clearly in the mirror, I didn't realize I had that bald spot. You feel me? Until one day someone showed me something they saw. Oof. Oof. And then I had to get rid of it. Because I can't be walking around with a bald spot. So I go to my brother, and I say, hey, listen, I've got this bald spot. I'm thinking a little DJ Khaled. Like, I want the little, you know, give me the lineup and make me look fresh. And he goes, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And it's my brother, so I trust him. So he starts cutting, and I start napping. Start drooling a little bit, because, you know, you know, when you have a good haircut, you're just like, ah. And so I'm sitting in my brother's barbershop, and I'm chilling. And he was done, and something felt free. Have you ever had that moment where you took off all your hair, like you cut it off or cut it short, and you just felt like you could feel the wind blowing in it? You felt like, oh, whoo. I wasn't shaking anything, but I was shaking. I was like, I felt so free. I felt so good. I was like, man, what is this? And when he turns me around, and I look at that mirror, I'm bald. <laughs> what just happened? In a little less than 60 minutes, my life changed. I can preach already. And I sat there in that barber chair, and I was shocked because I couldn't believe what I saw in the mirror. In order for me to set this thing up, in order for me to release vision, my first question I have to ask you is, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you look in the mirror, do you like who's staring back at you? Today's message, today's message is called Man in the Mirror. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. God, you are good. Speak to our hearts. Reveal what's inside. And prepare us for this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The late, great Bishop M. Jackson once sang this song, and it went like this. It says, I'm going to make a change. For once in my life, it's going to feel real good. I like these words. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make it right. And he almost kind of sounded a little bit like this. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. And I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at your heart and make a change. change. <laughs> Just turn to the news. It's time for a change. Listen to what the kids are talking about at school. It's time for a change. Things are getting weird. I can't scroll on social media anymore without listening about Cat William exposing T.D. Jakes, exposing this other artist. I can't listen to the news anymore without hearing things coming out, things that were hidden in secret. I can't sit here and pretend like we're good. It's time to make a change. And as I'm listening to the song that the great bishop sang, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look in your 
not in your government, not in your wallet, not in your spouse. Take a look at your heart and make a change. Celebrities are going wild on social media. Wars are breaking out everywhere. The ice cream machines are broken at McDonald's. What is the problem? It's time to make this world. And here's the truth, no matter where you stand politically, the reality is we can all unite on this one thing. It's time to make the world a better place, especially this November. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Here's what I will say. The church is supposed to be the light. And if you're clicking buttons that don't bring light to this world but bring darkness, then I've got a problem. If the church is showing up to the polls and not standing for what the word of God says, I've got a problem. We cannot conform to the patterns of this world. We've got to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, this vision is so strong on me because it's a vision that I'm sitting here going, but God, I'm still struggling. And he said, good, get in the struggle with your people. Because there are too many people who are afraid of the struggle, they don't even try. Right, right. Right. Honestly, it's time for the church to take a look in the mirror. If we're honest, I want to talk to those who are saved, sanctified, saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. The problem is when we look in the mirror, we don't like what we see. The problem is when we look in the mirror, we realize that there's pieces of us that we're not ready to let go and let God. So what happens, we don't look at the mirror because we're afraid of what it's going to show us. See, what I, what, I, what I love about the mirror is that the mirror can't lie. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> it exposes it all. Most of us don't like what we see. And I'm not talking about dad bod to God bod. I'm not talking about the grades that are starting to pop in my, my hair, my beard. No, I'm not talking about that. What, what do you see when you look in the mirror? I'm talking to the lies. I'm talking to the labels. I'm talking to those things that have been staring back at us for way too long. So let me ask you this. When you look in the mirror, do you see Jesus? Oh, I told you we're talking about a man in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, do you see Jesus looking back at you? What's the reflection? Or do you see the lies and the labels? Can I be honest? When I was younger, all I saw was the lies and the labels. And so I didn't like what I saw, so I didn't like me. And I remember walking through this journey and really confused and not really knowing who I am and, and struggling with my identity. And, and finally, it got to the point where I realized who I am in Christ, that for the first time in my life, I was able to love myself for who he created me to be. There are people in this room that have yet to fall in love with who God created you to be because you know that what you're doing is not who you were created to be. You know that who you have, be, have been is not the one that God created. Do you see Jesus when you look in the mirror? And so as I'm thinking about this whole vision idea and going, where did it go all wrong? I'm taken back to the very beginning. In this little humble, beautiful garden. And in Genesis chapter 3, it tells us that there was a serpent. And the serpent, who is the devil, was clever. The most clever of all the animals. And in this moment, this conversation, the serpent questioned Eve saying, did God really say can I just tell you this? If you're ever caught in a conversation with the enemy, let me tell you how you know it's the enemy because he's questioning God's word. If it's questioning God's word, then it must not be God. And if it's not God, then it's the enemy. Oh, but PC, my feelings, the word. The word was not written with your feelings in mind. The word was written with your eternity in mind. And so the enemy questions Eve, saying, did God really say? And they sit there and they have a conversation. 
And as we realize this, the enemy, I'm sure we've had those conversations. I've had the conversation this week. Did God really say that you were called to do? <laughs> Get me behind me, Satan. The problem is when we have a conversation with the enemy too long and we entertain it, that did God really say goes from even the garden to did God really say fill in the blank with my finances? Did God really say fill in the blank with my wife? Did, did God really say with what I watch? Hold on, but, but did God really say fill in the blanks with my vote? The enemy will cause us to question God. And what I love is in the book of James, James warns us. And he says it very clearly. And if you're taking notes, here's the first one I really want you to hold on to because there's three big points for this vision that we're going to move forward with. And it's this. The first one is resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. Because the reality is he is the father of lies and he will lie to you. The reality is, if you entertain the conversation, what you're going to get is a lie. Resist the devil and he will flee. If you entertain what he has to say, then you're probably going to be led astray. But here's the reality. If you don't give him a key, he can't get in. Resist the devil. When we get caught up in conversations with the enemy... We start carrying things we were never meant to carry. We start worrying about things we were never meant to worry about. We start dealing with things we were never meant to deal with. We get in relationships with people we should have never gotten in relationships with. Did God really say? And so the enemy sits there and he lies to Eve, and I realize this as we get ready for vision and what we're about to release for 2024, the biggest, one of the biggest blocks to the vision is this. You can't see clearly if you don't resist the enemy. You can't see God's vision clearly for your life if you don't resist the enemy, if you don't push him away, if you don't tell him to go, if you don't turn around and say, you know what, I'm not going to play with those things I used to play with. You can't see God's vision for you clearly if you don't resist the enemy. And so he lies to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, and here's what he says. He spins this idea, man, how many times has the truth been spun to us? He says, God knows that when you eat fruit from that tree, you will know things you have never known before. Listen, like God, I can't look in the room, but how many times this past week have we tried to be like God? How many times in this past few months did we carry things like if we were God? I know I have. I know I find myself walking in the name of ministry, in the name of my family, doing things when in reality I've not gotten off the throne and doing things like God instead of letting There's that phrase, let go and let God. Have you heard that? Do it. Let go and let God. Why? Because you're not him. And can I just bust everyone's little, little pride bubble for a moment? None of us will ever be good enough to be God. There it is. Message done. We can all go home. So the enemy tells her, like God, you will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. Well, that's a good thing. I want to be able to be like God. <laughs> I want to be able to tell good. Well, that's a good thing, right? It, it's good to be like God. It's good, it's good to be able. Can I just say this? There are decisions in your life. There are opportunities in your life. There are things in your life that are going to be good, but they're not God. And so the enemy twists some things. And technically, it wasn't a full lie. A little lie ain't going to hurt nobody, right? I just, I gotta say this. If you don't want your kid to be a liar, then don't tell white lies to your kids. 
I know someone who, who would look at me with, with our kids and I'd say something you know, very clear, you know, obviously appropriate for their age, but I'm not gonna lie to them about the situation. I'm gonna be very honest with them. Here's the deal and here's why, and this is what we're so praying for. Why would you say that? Don't tell them that. Just tell them this, well, that's a lie. It's a white lie. Hmm. I get caught in it and it's hard, but the reality is a lie is a lie. Well, if mommy lies, then I can lie. That was a side note. I don't even know where that one came from. So the enemy tells his lie to Eve in Genesis chapter 3. And then in verse 6, the woman saw that the tree's fruit was good to eat and pleasing to look at. She also saw that it would make a person wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate the enemy is not just after you, but he's after your family too. And if he can capture you, capture you in a lie, it's probably because he's trying to get to one of your family members too. It wasn't just Eve that he got, he got Eve and Adam. The enemy is not just after your family. He's after your friends. He's after your church. He's after those relationships. If he could just cap, catch you in that little lie, getting you to believe something. A lot of times we feel like the enemy's attacking me. No, the enemy's just getting you prepped so he can use you. But if you don't give him the key, he can't come in. It's that simple. So when you look in a mirror, what do you see? Here's what I know in 2024. If you are resisting the enemy, then you'll see Jesus in the mirror. If you're resisting the enemy, Jesus is who you're going to see. The word says to draw close to God. This is one good to write down, too. This is, this is something that's going to help us in 2024. Draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. So how do we draw close to God? Well, the same way you draw close to your spouse. The same way you draw close to friendships. You have to let them in. You can't have a healthy relationship, a healthy marriage, a healthy friendship, you, if you're so guarded because you can't trust people and you never let them in. It, it can't be healthy. So how do you draw close to God? You invite him into every area of your life, draw close to God, and resist the devil. But he see, that's hard. Yeah, I know. But in order for us to accomplish the mission that God has for us in 2024, we're going to have to resist the devil, and we're going to have to draw close to God. What does that mean? What, 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 what? It means don't give the enemy space in your life with your thoughts, with your eyes, with your relationships, with your time. When we listen to the enemy, it's like looking into the mirror and not recognizing yourself. If God is the creator, your creator, and he created you, and then the enemy gives you lies and you take them on, you start to put on those lies that the enemy gave you. Well, what happens is when you start looking in the mirror, you're not going to look like the original creation that God created you to be. Why? Because you're taking on the words of the enemy. When we listen to the enemy, what happens is it's, we get to the point where we look in the mirror and we don't recognize ourselves. James 1, chapter uh, James chapter 1, verse 23 and 24 says this. Suppose someone listens to the word, the word of God, but doesn't do what it says. Then they are like a person who looks at their face in a mirror, and after looking at themselves, they leave, and right away they forget what they look like. If the word tells you to draw close to God, he'll draw close to you, and the word tells you to resist the enemy and he will flee, and you hear the word, and you know the word, but you don't do the word, it's like you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you see your face, and the moment you walk away, you don't know who you are. Because the reality is, if you don't draw close to God, and you don't resist the devil, you can't be who you're created to be, because you don't know whose you are. When you listen to the enemy too long, when I listen to the enemy too long, I start to believe the lies. I know when Michaela Grace is up to no good. I love my seven-year-old, she's amazing. She's been, she's been walking through this diabetes thing like a champ. I mean, she's, she's phenomenal. 
and even though she's amazing, there's still parts of her that I go, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> take the wheel. <laughs> and I know when she's up to no good, uh, especially in those moments when I'm like, hey, Michaela, I don't hear anything. Hey, hey, Michaela, I don't hear anything. So I go to her and go, go to her room. Hey, what are you doing? I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. Have you ever had a moment when someone acted all paranoid when you asked them a question? It's probably because they were up to no good. And I know she's up to no good when I ask her and she kind of, she tells on herself. When God shows up in the garden with Adam and Eve, he calls out to Adam and Eve and he says, Adam, Eve, where are you? And the word says that they hid. Too many believers are hiding. Too many churches are hiding in woke culture. God calls to them and they hid. They're acting shady the same way Michaela acts shady when she's up to no good. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, it says that both of them knew things they had never known before. They realized that they were naked, so they sewed together fig leaves and made clothes for themselves. I don't know if you caught this, but they were hiding because of shame. They were hiding because of shame. Why? Because the lies of the enemy will lead us to shame. The lies of the enemy will always lead you to shame. It won't lead you to joy, although there might be some fun moments temporarily. You can pretend that you're happy, but there's always gonna be shame attached to the lies of the enemy. Why? Because there's a formula. Can I share the formula with you this morning? Is that okay? Yeah. Come on, I need you to talk back. It's Vision Sunday. Can I, can I share the formula? Yeah. Here's the formula. The enemy uses lies to make you sin. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to make sure everyone hears. The enemy uses lies to make you sin. And then sin gives you shame so you hide. Hide from who? From God. Adam, Eve, where are you? We were naked. Our flesh was exposed. So I hid. The enemy uses lies to make you sin, and sin gives you shame to make you hide. Because if you're hiding from God, then you can't be drawn close to Him. Do you see it? If in 2024, we're supposed to resist the enemy and draw close to God, then he's going to lie to you to cause shame so that you can hide because the last thing he wants is for you to resist him, but more importantly, for you to draw close to God. I'm talking to a church today that I'm saying God is calling us to draw close to him. God is calling his people to get closer to him, to resist the lies of the enemy. God is calling us into something more. And my question is, are you ready for the more? Because we keep asking for God to give us breakthroughs, and we keep asking for financial miracles, and we keep wanting the Lord to be God in our life and take care of our spouse and do things in our family. And do, but you don't submit yourself and draw closer and resist the devil. How can God give you the blessings if you can't submit to him. How do we know Adam and Eve were ashamed? Because they hid from God. They tried to cover it up. And so God asks Adam, hey, where were you? And Adam says, I was afraid. I was naked. And I hid. In 2024, I promise you this. When you look in the mirror, if you're drawing closer to God, then Jesus is what you're going to see. 
But 2024 is the year of being exposed. The world's doing it on their own, and God's about to expose some people. 2024 is going to be the year of being exposed, and what God is going to show is, are you the wheat or are you the chaff? When you look in the mirror, are you for me or are you against me? But God, I preached in your name, depart, I know you not. But God, I did missions in your name, depart from me, I know you got. But God, I did all, I tithed in your name, depart from me for I know you not. 2024 is the year of exposure and the way it's going to be exposed is when we see what's in the mirror. What you see is what's reflecting who you are. There's nothing magical about a mirror. All it does is reflects the truth. So if we're supposed to resist the enemy and we're supposed to draw close to God and in 2024, you don't see Jesus? Then we've missed it. Oh, I haven't even shared the vision yet. <laughs> Take a look in your heart, someone says. There's a phrase in health community, it's you are what you eat. I'm not super healthy, so I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert. <laughs> But the meaning of this phrase is simply this. It says, if you, what you fill yourself with is what you become. Now, the reality is this. Is I, I'm not going to become a big chicken when I eat at Buffalo Wild Wings. It's just, that's not going to happen. Praise God for some Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Sweet and spicy. It's just right. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm, I'm drooling. We're ending our fast, y'all. Oh, my gosh. We've done 20 days of fasting, and I can't wait to eat me some Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, let me... But the idea to you are what you eat refers to health. What you consume on the inside will show on the outside. That's why people who are unhealthy have a struggle looking in the mirror. When I carried the lies and the shame and didn't realize how good I really look. But I listened to the lies. I had a hard time looking in the mirror because I didn't like what I saw because what I saw, I didn't realize that was made fearfully and wonderful. Right. Right. There was something that happened that blurred what I saw. Oh, we're getting there, y'all. We're getting there, y'all. Because of the lies, many of us see labels. Yeah. We see the things that are on us that are blurring the true vision. The enemy knows this. The enemy knows word. The enemy knows that there's life and death in the tongue. Romans 10, 17 says this. When we hear God's word spoken to us, then we can have faith. Faith comes by hearing well, the enemy does the same thing with lies. Kevin, can you come up here? When we hear God's word, we can have faith. Watch it. Just stand your back. Scoot over that way a little bit. Just look up in the mirror. And just look at the people from the mirror. And what happens is the enemy does the same thing because he knows the word of God. And he knows that if you're listening to God's word, you can have faith. Can you rip me off some big pieces here? I want you to see what I saw as God showed me this vision for this year. See, for too long, for too long the enemy was putting labels on you. Come on, you gotta, we, gotta, we gotta move. For too long, for too long the enemy said you're broken. For too long, come on, come on, come on, I need you to rip, baby, rip this thing like it's just, oh, they, for too long, the enemy said, you're not good enough. Come on, that tech person wrapped up in tech tape, there you go. For too long, the enemy said, nah, you're not worth it. For, oh, oh, you think this is, it's happening to us in this room. For too long, the enemy says, 
That marriage is going nowhere. Come on, more tape. I'm, I'm on a roll. I'm on fire. For too long, the enemy has told you, you can't do it because you messed up. For too long, the enemy told you, he has left you and he has forsaken you. Come on, one more, one more, one more. For too long, the enemy told you, you will never please God. And the problem is when I look in the mirror, I can't see the real picture because the labels have blurred who I really am, what I really look like. And instead of looking at the person who was created fearfully and wonderfully, we see the lies first before we see the creation. The enemy knows this, so he whispers, so he speaks. The lies you welcome in turn into the labels you wear. The lies you allow in become labels that you wear. And to make a world a better place, you gotta take a look at your heart and let God do some work. You gotta be honest with some things. You gotta go to counseling. You gotta let go of those relationships. To make the world a better place, you gotta take a look inside and you gotta let God do work. King David writes in Psalms chapter 139, verse 23 and 24, God, see what is in my heart. Know what is there. Test me, Lord. Know what I'm thinking. See if there's anything in my life that you don't like. Help me to live the way that is always right. I promise you today was Vision Sunday, but the reality is this. I can't give you vision if you can't see clearly. I can't share vision with you if when you look in the mirror, you don't see Jesus. I can't share vision with you for 2024 if you're busy looking at the labels. So before I can share the vision, we have to remove the blinders. We have to look in our hearts. We've got to get rid of these labels because here's what I believe. 2024 is a year of freedom, taking labels off and being healed. 2024 is a year of purpose, ending cycles, and advancing the kingdom. 2024 is a year of restoration, returning us to the original reason that we were created fearfully and wonderfully on purpose for a purpose. 2024, Mary, are you ready? Is the year for restoration. And so here is the word that God has for 2024. Brothers and sisters, my faithful ones, you are brave warriors and steadfast citizens of the kingdom. Today marks a pivotal moment in history. As your king, I stand before you, not just as a ruler, but as a father preparing his children. The echoes of long fought battles resonate in the hearts of many, but the time has come for us to rise from the ashes and emerge victorious. We have withered storms, faced adversity, and now, with unwavering resolve, we prepare for triumph. Let unity guide our path. Let courage fuel our spirits. Let righteousness be our compass. Together, we shall forge a legacy that withstands the test of time. Honour my people to victory and the restoration of our sacred lands. Hear me for today, I proclaim decree that shall echo through generations. It is time to return to holy. So in 2024, we're going to return to holy. In 2024, our focus is going to be holiness at Restoration Church. I don't care what people on the outside are doing, but I'm going to take a look on the inside. For 2024, we're going to be holy, not because we're trying to be perfect, but we're going to be holy because the Lord calls us to be holy. In 2024, we've got to be resolved. In 2024, we've got to be restored. But listen, there's a reason why God's calling this church to holy. Because in 2024, we've got to be ready for what's coming. It's time to return to holy. When we look in the mirror, when you look in the mirror, my heart's cry is that you're going to see more in more of Jesus and less and less of you. 
First Peter chapter one, verse 13 through 17 says this. It says, roll up your sleeves. Get your head in the game. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't be lazy. Don't slip back into old ways of evil. Doing what you feel like doing. <laughs> that's a word for us. You didn't know anything back then. You didn't know better then. But you do now. You know it's time to return to holy. So as obedient children, let yourself be pulled into the way of a life shaped by God's life. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said this to Restoration Church. I am holy, so be holy. In 2024, we are returning to holy. What does that look like? Don't make it a bigger thing than it is. It means at work, be holy. At school, be holy. When you're alone, be holy. When you're with friends, be holy. Listen, on Monday morning, be holy, be holy, for God is holy. How? Resisting the enemy, drawing close to God, looking in your heart and letting God do a work. Stand to your feet. My prayer is that we would spend so much time chasing after God that when people see us, they would see the reflection of God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that your church would return to holy. God, in all we do this year, Lord, that you would begin to work things out of us and holiness into us. Father, let us not take this word and this vision lightly. For God, you are calling your people to be resolved. You're calling your people to be restored. You're calling your people to be ready, to be holy. For what's coming is not easy. For what's coming is not nice. For what's coming is dark. For what's coming is crazy. But if we're holy, then the light inside of us can never be drowned out by the dark. Father, I pray that we would be holy because you, God, are holy. We're going to sing this song, Holy Forever. And I just want you to picture him as your holy father. And I want you to think about what inside of you does he need to shift correct and work on to bring you back to holy because if we have holy spirit inside of us we get to be holy just like our father let's sing this together Let's 
him from dead, then you will be saved. The first step to returning to holiness is believing and receiving the one who is holy. So all across this room, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I don't care what your journey has been. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what your relationship uh, with God has been. I want you to think about right now, in this moment, do you have a relationship with the Lord where you are in right standing with Him. Have you received Jesus as your Savior? Have you declared with your mouth that He is Lord and have you believed in your heart that He was raised from the dead? Because if you haven't taken the first step, you won't see Jesus in the mirror reflecting back.
So I'm gonna ask that everyone would pray with us this moment. And if you've never made this declaration, if you've never received that gift of salvation, if you've never, never taken that first step of holiness, then I wanna give us all the opportunity to do so with our eyes closed so that we're not distracted. Would everyone in this room please repeat after me? Jesus, I wanna be holy because you are holy. And so today, I make the decision to receive you and believe in you, to declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you died or put on a cross, resurrected for me, to wash me of my sins and to make me holy. In Jesus' name. If this is the first time you've made that decision, you've accepted salvation, I want you to fill out a, a connection card and just let us know. I have a gift we want to give you to help you out on that journey. It's the worst thing to get in a car and go on a trip and not know where you're going. If, if you've maybe said this, if this is a moment where you want to recommit something, you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord, you don't have to receive salvation again. But there are moments where we have to just get things right with the Lord. I want you to fill out a connection card so we know how to pray for you and how to serve you. 2024 is a year of holiness. We're returning to holy, y'all. Are you ready? Amen.